and I'm back. And, uh, I'm, I'm late. I'm sorry. Hello again, it is Thrawn's Revenge here. Uh, sorry I'm late. I got a good reason, though. Uh, I always say I have a good reason, but this is an actual good reason. So, for those that didn't know, um, I was at Brickfest Live, um, in Puyallup in Washington. This was my first time attending, so this was a new experience for me. So this main video is basically going to be talking about some of the stuff I got, my experience with it, and my overall thoughts as going there as a AFL. So, first, we'll talk about what did I get. That's kind of the hall. Um, it does seem like a really small hall, but keep in mind that this will be one of my complaints. The only thing that they sell there in the actual site of the festival is just traditional Lego. There's no custom anything. So I personally didn't really find anything that I felt was worth the money as all of the stuff that they had for sale I could get at the Lego store or at Amazon or something else. There was nothing custom or unique to it. So that's why there's not a lot. This was my badge that I use as a displayer. There were only two people, me and another person called Jeremy. Jeremy is also known as Mini Lego Formers on Instagram. You should check it out and I'll show you why later. So this is my badge. I got it signed by Manny and his dad, the two Lego masters who were there. Got to chat with them. Super nice, super relaxed, very chill people. Um, we took a picture together. I don't know if they've posted it or not. You know, I don't like to show my face, so. I won't be linking to that, but I'm sure you'll see it at some point, but there's this guy. So I got them to sign it. I brought my own silver pen. Actually, it's the same silver pen that I used for my subathon uh, last week. So that was a lot of fun. This this was my badge. So I got that. Um, they also gave me stickers. I, I bought some of these uh, and then the rest of them they gave me. So these are really cool. I am a huge sticker fan, um, but I kind of don't put them on, any, on anything. I kind of hoard them. Um, so here's like a uh, head of Manny. Here's Manny and his dad as minifigs with their signatures on it. Here's Manny's dad and here's Manny. So those are the stickers that I got, which are cool. I will definitely be using those for something. Um, maybe I'll put them on like my computer or something like that. And then of course, I got a brick and I'm always a fan of an engraved brick. I have like a stack of engraved bricks, some of which have personal information, so I can't really show you all of them, but maybe at some point if enough people are interested, I can show my stack of engraved bricks. I'll have more for after this year's BrickCon as well. So this I was really happy to get. I was I was wondering if they were going to do some sort of Lego piece that I could have as like a, hey, I did this thing. So this is neat. Huge fan of this guy. And then as well as Jeremy, Mini Lego Formers, gave me this little guy. And if you can recognize it, this is a Optimus Prime and it is very small. I want to say this is under 30 parts, which is pretty neat. Um, and it does transform. So let's see if I can do this live. So we're going to we're going to. So this rotates around, if I remember this. Folds out like so. Yep. This whole thing swivels up. And there you go. There's there's our little there's a little Optimus Prime, and I think that's really neat. So he was uh, showing these around to the public. That's mostly what he had. He had a bunch of his little um, mini transformers. I think this thing's really sick. So check him out if you're interested. Uh, he I'll post all his links in the description down below for his Instagram and his Etsy store where he sells instructions and these is just actual kits that you can straight up buy. Um, what I brought for my uh, display... Oh god, I broke him. <laughs> I broke him. So this is my display. You'll see the three images that I had for my display with the QR codes as well as a bunch of models from Jar Jar Bricks. All of the Jar Jar Bricks models have now finally come in. I will be making a review for every single one of those that I currently do not have a review for. If you would like a review for one that I've already done, for example, I have the Hailfire Droid now in CIS colors. If you want to know what that looks like, just let me know, I'll make a quick little short video on that, because um, there's not much to review as I've already done one. <clears throat> In terms of the event itself, I feel that this event was mostly targeted for a hands-on experience for kids. I'd say for AFOLs or adult fans of LEGOs, there's not really much to do here, if I'm being honest. Especially if you're a displayer. I kind of just stood around for seven hours straight 
two days in a row and just talk to people. And I did really enjoy the talking for comparison when I went to BrickCon. Usually I don't do that much talking with the people because they're mostly there to see everything. And there's no way they're going to spend enough time at your table to actually, you know, discuss about the models you've made or any interests or even the QR codes that I had for buying my instructions, going to my YouTube, going to my Instagram, all that kind of jazz. <clears throat> and then as well as like, there were again there were only two people there displaying um supposedly it's been very difficult to find people for this so i do hope that the turnout in the coming years for the washington bricks fest does become better i think part of the reason of that is that the uh, seattle people don't want to go down to puyallup i definitely would not want to go down to puyallup i only did this because i wanted something to do and i thought it'd be fun to kind of be out there for other events too so i I definitely think I will do this again, um, but generally my reception is kind of like a, a lukewarm kind of thing. I feel if there was more support for the AFLs there, I think the AFL turnout would be much better. Um, in terms of what was there, here's some images and some videos, and we will get straight to that part right now. Jump cut. So over here we have my full display. This is everything I brought. I know I showed you guys images, but... I thought it'd be more fun if I showed you like the full display close up. There you'll see the ATA. I will be making a video on that soon. I swear I'm just a little behind on some other models I need to catch up with as well as some other models that one of my friends brought who came with me and some more models that Jar Jar Bricks had provided for me to be able to display to the public. Um, here we have Jeremy's models, the mini Lego formers. These were really, really cool. I really liked them. I thought they were so neat that they were able to transform at such a tiny little size. Um, at the bottom, you'll see his QR code there. But again, all his information will be at the bottom in the description down below. Um, he also had Voltron, so not just normal transformers, but Voltron as well. Um, but of course, it Voltron transforms as well. So obviously, I had to show you guys that one. Um, they also had models by um I, I don't remember what the company was called like brickopolis something like that um models that you could buy the instructions for it was a, oh build better bricks that's what it was and then that's the qr code i won't be putting that in there because you know if you are interested you can take a look at that um this was the store this was just lego products everything that you could just buy at the lego store i didn't really find it very interesting not a lot of customs again um, i usually prefer to buy like either custom models custom instructions custom parts you know brick arms eclipse graphics that kind of stuff um they also lego was there but lego only had like lego stationary products i don't know if this was done by lego and or lego was like partially rented out for this or something i didn't really ask in all honesty but that was kind of neat to see like pens and binders and you know rulers and stuff like that so that was pretty interesting I mean, I'm sure the kids loved it. They're either drawing on the tables and stuff. Um, this was a huge mur mural they were doing. And what was really cool about this is if you see right there, there is uh, plates on top. And there's a space in between the, the main plate that everything's on, the base plate, and the plates on there. And then they will give them those images of where to put those plates. And so the reason I took a video of this is because... When they were disassembling all of this, the reason there's a gap in between is they would just put a metal rod all the way through and pry up. And so you and your family would be able to build one of those and, you know, kind of put them out there. Um, they also had other building displays. <coughs> there was a architecture building display, which that is the main architecture building, and that's what you put your building around. So I saw this similar thing in Chicago when I was in Chicago with my sister. Um, they had, like, you know, a bunch of white bricks, and you could just build towers and and cool buildings and stuff and so i thought that was kind of neat the building itself i found the most interesting um the little pod hotel section on that side the castle and aztec pyramid um the more traditional like greek style 
um, so a Roman style I thought was really cool. So that thing was really cool. And then they also had one for Minecraft. So this is the Minecraft one. Um, it's just a Steve. And they were like, yeah, you know, put Minecraft-esque things next to it. Um, I saw a lot of Simpsons for some reason near the Minecraft. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, there were two other displays that were here. I did not show them. There was one that was a glow-in-the-dark one where they used a bunch of the, like, classic space, Mtron, you know, that kind of stuff, like Space Police, that had, like, lights in it, neon lights, or, or the, like, UV lights. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't really take any pictures of that over there because they didn't have their own display to show. And then, of course, there were also a bunch of, like, statues that you could take pictures near. I didn't take any pictures of those either. I didn't find them very interesting. Um, so that's all of that. My overall experience, I say positive, but in the lukewarm category, um... It was fun. I would be willing to do it again. I think I'd be willing even more to do it if there was some better stuff for me to do. I was very bored, but I did really enjoy being able to talk to so many people and, like, talk about the work I do, and especially some new coming AFOLs who were there who were like, H how do you get into this? You know, where do you buy parts? How do you... What a studio? I didn't even know you could do that. You know, they were mind blown from that. So I was very happy to introduce them to just a bunch of new stuff, and of course plug BrickCon being like, bro, if you if you want those mocks, if you want those customs, you gotta go to BrickCon. That that's that's what's up. And so I think if if Brickfest Live could implement some of the things that BrickCon does, I think Brickfest Live would do even better. I have heard that the Brickfest A Live in the East Coast is actually much, much better than the one here. Um, probably due to the fact that they're a traveling kind of thing. So they probably home base is the East Coast. So they don't have all the materials here. But if they did some of that networking, I think it could definitely work out well. So that's been my experience. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it's late again. Um, FYI, there is five days left for the Thrawn 30-part challenge. Get those entries in to win your LEGO gift cards. And thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.